Today we will be coding with Scratch, and I'm going to show you how to make your own boss battle. But first, let's make it so our sprite can move. So make a function called movement. So now let's make it so on start forever and movement. So now let's just add a few if statements. And while we're doing that, I will say this. So I've had multiple sections that I've left unfinished. And sadly, I am not planning to come back to those. Uh, I will make a new one, however, which we will be working on a boss battle. So you really like boss battles, I'm guessing. They're like that moment that you worked super hard for. What if you made a boss battle and you didn't have to go up for an entire game to fight it? That would still be pretty cool. So now let's add another block called move. And then we're going to add this, which will be the direction. So now it's going to point in direction, this, and then it's going to move speed. So let's set speed uh, to 5. So now make sure this is set to speed. And now we can kind of do this real quick. So this will be 90 negative 90, 0, 180. So now, so one thing, one thing you need to make sure, mine's working because I have it set rotation style left, right, so you'll have to add this block, but now it looks pretty good. Um, We're missing a certain animation, however, that could make our game look a lot better. So, now what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to make it so it sets moving when we're moving to true. Well, it makes it so we are moving. So, let's add a new variable, moving. So now, I saw this method, and I kind of liked it. So, zero is true, and one is false. So, let's set moving to zero, which... I mean, one, which means it'll start out false. And now, let's add a variable. I mean, a function, which will be animate. I'm going to add a little comment. Main function. So, let's pause this. And now, we're going to define animate. So, what animate will be is, we'll add more of this when we add, like, animations and stuff for different things. But for now, what we're going to do is, if moving equals zero. So, let's set moving to zero when we move. And it'll go next costume. One thing we have to keep an eye on, though, is that we can't have this in the same forever loop or else it will stall the other one. So what we're going to do is let's just have it in another one so it doesn't stop the other one. And what should happen is, hopefully, let's have this um a little faster because he's moving really slow. 0 0.25, maybe. Let's see how this works. Looks like he's limping. So, that'll be good, but you know it's one problem. I'm not moving, and he still is. So now, let's add another if. If. So now, let's add something. So, we're automatically going to assume that if any key is pressed, so let's bring out an if else. If any key is pressed, then they are moving. If any, if key any is pressed. So now we're going to set moving to zero. Else if they decide to stop moving, it's going to be set to one. So let's test this. Also, one more thing. I don't want him to look like this when, um, when uh, we're in the thing, because that just doesn't look that cool. So, 
let's add our first if else to the anime. So let's make it so this defaults to normal if we're not moving. So that would be costume one. Now let's put this back in and you'll notice it works now. So now we have our beautiful moving character and it, we've done it in a nice clean way. Um, a few more things we need to make sure. So if any key pressed and we are not touching the edge. So let's make sure that we're not touching the edge when we try and move. Cause see, watch right now. Oh, whoops. <laughs> if if we do this, then they can just Oh, Scratch might have actually added something because before uh but still let's add this if on edge bounce. So so it kind of makes it tries to direct it the other way, which works well for what we're doing. So this is just the start. Now we have to add our other character. Now I'll add a more detailed sprite, but for now let's just So I'll put the link to the part one for this. Uh, this is just kind of like a holder. I'll make a better sprite later. So I'm plan. I'll um make a better sprite and character later. I'm purposely doing this bad because scratch is really hard to animate or well, draw with. At least for me. I don't know, maybe it's not for you. But they're gonna look something like this, more or less. I'm gonna make them a bit tinier, however, so change the size to 50. Uh, no, 75. You can draw your little guy. Uh, okay, that looks fine. So now, what we're gonna do is... Let's see, so let's make it so a, I just need to make sure this is correct. So I'm going to make it so he's centered. So this is the middle. So that's centered and a lot nicer now. So now we can make it so he actually kind of moves around. So first, let's add our on start forever. And let's make it so... They have different goals. So let's add a block set goal. So this will make it so our, our enemy picks which goal is best. And it will do this out of logic. So we can add a bunch of if statements to check things. So if, first let's check distance. If we're close to the player, then we can easily come flying towards them and hurt them. So what we're going to do is go to, uh, let me see where it was. It's distance. Oh, okay. Distance. So if we were to test this out, let's rename our sprites. Cat. Toothache. I'll draw a better sprite, and I'm gonna make my own custom sprite. But um, dis if distance to cat, so let's just do this though. So there are 150. Okay, then if there are 150 at this point, then uh, what if I think if they're at least this close, they should the tooth guy should decide to move towards them. So. Let's make it so if distance to cat is less than 225, 230, uh, 250, then, well, let's make it a bit closer. I'm going to do 200, and so they don't always perform this, just because the player might be pretty close, and pick random 1 out of 10. But I'm going to change this to 1 out of 2. 
Uh, so now, so one to, let's say, one out of three. And now let's add another variable. Let's make this one for this guy only. And it says goal set. So when we start, let's set goal set to one because he doesn't have a goal. But however, when he has his goal, let's set it to zero. So now if uh, goal set equals one so now let's make it so this actually kind of put into action our thing i'm gonna make my tooth guy a bit smaller and now let's have it so it points towards the player and first of all make sure yours it it really depends on the character if you have a turret you can set it all around if you have like a normal guy doesn't matter, but mine's gonna not rotate at all. So point towards cat, and then it's gonna it's gonna repeat. Um, it's gonna repeat until. So I'm gonna add a new variable just for holder x. So this is just a holder sprite. Repeat until so either. They have, there's a few conditions, so, or, or, so now, let's add these, so, if they are touching cat, then we want them to stop moving. If they are touching the edge, we want them to stop moving. If they have moved a certain distance, so let's say 100 pixels then we want them to stop moving okay so now let's put this in here and let's say move five steps and let's change x by five that seems fair uh, maybe 10, 10 might be a bit, uh, better. So, now, this is our first attack, so let's test this out. Oh, <laughs> so let's make them start at default position. This guy, I want him to go to, uh, oh, oops. So this should actually be here. I made a little mistake. This should actually be in set goal. So let's make him go to go zero, zero, the right smack mill. And he can go to Y zero, negative 150. Uh, let's go 25 up. So first let's wait. Let's wait one second before we kind of get into all this. And wait, we can just add right up here. Wait two seconds. So let's add kind of like a break. So now, let's see though. So distance. Wow, that's really close. So, but it's less than 100, so it should be working. Uh, wait, let me test something. I made one other small problem. So this will make it more likely for it to happen. One, see, he went. So, can I walk around? Nah, nah, nah. Maybe that's too fast. You could be the decider of that. But I'm going to change it down to seven. Seven. So now let's try that again. That seems fair. And it was dodgeable. Let's see. Oh, okay, so he got stuck on the corner, so I'm going to add if on edge bounce and see if that helps it at all. Mm, 
Come on. Come on. You can do it. Oh, he touched me. Next time we'll be implementing damage. Fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just to make this easier on myself, I'm going to set it to 3 to 3. 3 to 3 for now. And this will make it so he has to come towards me. Oh, <laughs> wait. That's actually kind of cool. Not the effect I was looking for, though. Ah, uh, so that is kind of cool. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the ore touching edge. And we can kind of let that bounce thing happen, because honestly, that is kind of cool. <laughs> so now, instead he bounces. That's kind of cool. How he, like, comes towards me and then, like, bounces. But I'm not close enough. If I'm... So now let's play again. Bong. Bong. Oh, we also have to set X... So, we can't have X to be that accurate. So, let's make, add our last thing, so he's not like a ping pong ball. If X is more than 99, and so when we start this, set X to 0. Because I'm used to a Python in which X is just a variable I add, and it automatically sets to 0. So, let's see if this is... A far enough distance for us. Okay, yeah. So let's set it to... Um, let's set it to 299, which would be like 300. You can be the judge of whether that's... Oh, come on. Oh, darn it. Okay, that's still not enough for me. I kind of want to see him bounce. So, four ninety nine. No, uh, let's try six ninety nine. That'd be seven hundred. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. Okay, but next time we come back, we'll be adding damage and so much more cooler things. And I will come back with better looking sprites. I promise. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.